Hey guys, sorry for the untidy hair and overall messy appearance, but I wanted to take a moment here just to quickly talk about uh, some of the new Music Tuesday releases for this week. Um, obviously, I've already done the uh, Kathleen Edwards review that I said I was going to on Tuesday. Um, hopefully, if everything has gone according to plan, you will see um, the My Vinyl Finds video, and which should be the one before this one. Um, this is obviously going to happen right now, and then hopefully tomorrow, by at least tomorrow night, because I'm a little bit behind in certain parts of it, um, the first aid kit review will come out, and that should um, hopefully do it for the week um, before we trudge on into next week and get into the Hold Steady's Craig Finn and his new solo record, and uh, we go forward from there. For now, um, this is just the stuff that I spotted in passing as I was browsing through my iTunes list and uh, decided to write it down and just um, give you guys some of my quick thoughts on each one, um, which can always be sort of a harrowing task depending on what they're releasing from week to week given the iTunes list of what, to, you know, top albums and songs for like the week or the month or whatever it is. It's, it's scary business most of the time, let's be honest. Um, other than the one, the Black Keys is El Camino is near the top, but that's another story. First up on the list, of course, we have Kathleen Edwards, which I just uh, reviewed earlier in the week on Tuesday. If you did not see it, um, this is her new album, Voyager. It is a collaboration with uh, Justin Vernon from Bon Ivar. I almost couldn't say that. Um, and it's an album that, honestly, I did not think I would enjoy at first. I didn't think that... Um, yeah, I thought it would be kind of too pop, kind of too shiny, kind of too soundtrack to a television show. You know, I really wouldn't care for it. But the more I listened to it, uh, between her talent and songwriting and the production with Justin Vernon, um, I think it came out really beautifully. Really, really beautifully. Um, I always know when I have a good record on my hands when there's like at least like four to six songs that I can go through. I'll just, I'll continually bounce through them. After I go through a few playthroughs, then it's like I go back and it's like, okay, I can listen to that one, that one, that one, and that one, and I'll go back and listen to that and I'll start it all over again. So it's like, I really like those songs. Those are awesome songs. And uh, I'm definitely encountering that, and um, which definitely helped with my overall review for it. So that's definitely on the must-see list for this week. Also, we have Annie DeFranco. Um, I didn't really check this one out because I'm not a huge Annie DeFranco fan, but with uh, the uh, all-ladies trend this week has taken in terms of reviews with uh, Kathleen Edwards and then um, First Aid Kit tomorrow, um, I figured I would mention her because she is sort of, um, I don't know, quite a legendary figure in, in folk music, but a very prominent one at the very least, and she is somewhat a native of the area that I am from, so that's kind of a cool thing, and she's... Uh, uh, going along with new songs, um, I think that if I was, if I'm remembering correctly, some of the songs were sort of towards an older bent, like uh, the protest songs of uh, old folk music. I think even Pete Seeger joined her for a particular song on that album. Um, so if you're, you know, if you're an Annie DeFranco fan, I'm sure you'll be quite pleased. Um, I'll definitely give that one a pass because I'm sure. Um, I'm sure it's probably pretty good. Wilco also has a new, sort of a new thing. Um, they're going to be releasing um, an iTunes session, an iTunes Live session, which I might review. Um, coming up in the next couple weeks. I don't know if it's next week or the week after. I think it's this month, though, for sure. And um, I think they do a song on there with uh, Nick Lowe, one of Nick Lowe's songs, and um, just a bunch of other stuff from the new record and some other things. And um, that'll be fun, of course. You know, I love I love me some Wilco anytime, any place. You know, so I, that's a good one. That's that's always gets you know a thumbs up from me. Also, we have uh, a comedian for this week. We have uh, Kevin Hart. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he's been sort of a, a recent um, uh, acquisition of the ears, so to speak. I had just recently uh, heard some of his stand-up material. Um, Depends upon your sense of humor, if you don't mind a little cursing and whatnot. It, I, I know some people vary on what their taste in comedians are. Um, I go both ways in that regard, not too heavy on the inappropriate side, but depending on what you like, he's, he's pretty funny. Um, his newest stuff is definitely pretty good, so i got to give that uh, a definite uh, star of approval, so to speak. Also, we have Paul McCartney this week with the official announcement and pre-order um, for his new album coming out um, in just a couple weeks. It's unfortunate to say that Paul has finally gotten to the point in his career that he's releasing a standards album. 
And I'm just going to give you a second there to allow the collective groan from the mass audience to dissipate. Okay, good. Um, I, I, I can't even give this a vote of support. Not that I've given Paul much faith in recent years. Um, his collaboration with um, Fireman or the Fireman, whatever it was, that was pretty decent. Um, but other than that, you know, I, I, I'm... I, it requires a level of admiration for me that I'm very willing to give to see a man at his age still, you know, really kicking ass on tour and delivering amazing live shows and going on full tours when a lot of guys in the older sect still performing music won't do these heavy tours and he's just out there still going and going and going. And I got to give him credit for that. I wouldn't begrudge that, but I have to begrudge this because I can only think of one man, Rod Stewart, with all of the standards albums and even McCartney mentioned it in one of his interviews that I guess he gave about it and he realized he had to do it after Rod Stewart released so many he realized he'd never get his chance and I, I don't know I don't see the appeal of doing standard albums is it just the point where you don't have anything left that you need to say or that you want to say or you know is this just are you in the soft zone even more I mean because some of Paul's stuff has sort of been in the soft kind of cushy you know, flip floppy kind of weak jelloey zone over the years, and it's just like, have you finally hit the bottom, Paul? Do you not care? I, I mean, I know it's a passion, obviously, of his. You know, older songs and music, and it's you know, it's great to have passion for music that you love and that you enjoy, but it's it's hard to see that when it's just like you know, we've just had Tom Waits release a great new album in the past year. And we're about to have Leonard Cohen release an album of brand new material at the very end of the month. And it's like, to me, I don't begrudge Paul for wanting to indulge his passions. But at the same time, I say to myself, you know, where are you as compared to like Tom and Leonard? Like, they've got things left to say. And I want to hear them a lot more than I want to hear what's already been done. I would have to say it's, it's probably... Um, Definitely, probably definitely um, a must miss in my regard in in my opinion and um, I definitely would not suggest it I mean unless you're a diehard McCartney fan and you like this kind of stuff it just seems like it's so much more worthwhile to, to actually hear new music and artists releasing great new songs I mean really and on that note while we're talking about that um, to immediately switch gears here Leonard Cohen um, with his release coming up on the 31st, um, has released another new uh, single for streaming online. If you go find that, um, it might be either on his website or the Facebook uh, fan page for his, his uh, him, for him. And you might be able to find that on there. Um, I can't, I don't know the title. The title is Going Home. I think it is something along those lines. And uh, in typical Leonard fashion, it's um, not so much uh, singing as uh, Show Me the Place and... Um, darkness were as so much as it's uh, sort of like a, a spoke mix of spoken word poetry with some backing um, singers behind him and um, I think it's a very cool thing I think it's very I think it's very hip and very um, very interesting and to hear the third song now just kind of gets me more uh, jazzed to hear what he's got to say not that Leonard Cohen and Paul McCartney share anything and I guess I have to leave the the you know, the sticking point with Paul McCartney alone. I have to stop worrying this bone that I can't change. But it's just like, you know, I'm intrigued to see what Leonard is going to bring to the table at 77 years old. And he's releasing these songs, these previews to these songs that are like, okay, I think you've really got something here. This like, I, you know, I'm ready to bow to Leonard Cohen this year because you've still got fresh things to say. You've still got something in that great, insightful head of yours. And it's like, I'm ready to sit here and listen to it. Please do present it because I'm I'm terribly excited about it. So definitely check out that single. Um, that's definitely a thumbs up. Lastly, for things that I spotted this week, um, there is a new uh, Bon Ivar. Uh, release um, in collaboration with an Irish band um, called The Chieftains. Um, I'm not sure if they're one of these older Irish bands that like carry on as a name but have different members and stuff because I guess they are celebrating their 50th anniversary. Not quite sure how that works. I suppose I could have looked it up but 
you know, why go to all that trouble, right? I'm not doing a music blog or anything. No, no. Um, but any anyway, minus that little moment there. Um, Bon Ivar has collaborated with them along with a score of other um, musicians of various uh, genres and, and, su and such. I may end up doing a review of that come February when that drops. I think that drops on uh, February the 20th. But anyway, Bon Ivar um, did a song called, a traditional song called Down in the Willow Garden, which is sort of like a traditional folk murder ballad, more or less. Like a, um, one of those sort of dark, Lee Grimm songs of murder from <laughs> from the old days, I guess. I <laughs> um, one of those brothers Grimm kind of things. Um, but if you go hunting around, you can find that too. That's on um, the oh the Pitchfork website, I believe. Um, yeah, I think it is. It's on Pitchfork. Uh, if you go find it there, or uh, if you go to uh, the 24-bit music blog. I don't know if anybody out there knows about that. You can find it there. One of the best sources for finding out new music stuff. Um, gotta gotta love that. Um, that definitely is gets a hearty thumbs up from me. Most everything is a you know it gets a pass from me this week. Uh, Kevin Hart, the comedian, of course. The Will Call iTunes session. Um, Andy DeFranco, I'm sure. More of guesswork on that one than anything. Uh, Kathleen Edwards, of course. Um, first aid kit, um, not really going to say anything about them here, but I will be doing a new review on that tomorrow. Um, I think you can expect good things from that too. Uh, more Swedish love here on my channel. And of course, uh, Bon Ivar in collaboration with the Chieftains on Down in the Willow Garden. So, you know, get out there, go on your iTunes or go on your internets and go find some of these new songs and singles and previews and stuff. And, uh, until next time guys, keep your music flowing and your vinyl spinning. I will see you all very, very soon.